This is Correctional Officers in the News with your host, Lerone Coots. This report comes to us from the United Kingdom, from England, from a prison named HMP Norwich, which stands for Her Majesty's Prison, Norwich. Um, the title of the article, which I will provide a link to with this video, is Inmate Breaks Prison Officer's Nose After Refusing Exercise. Now, the reason why I wanted to focus on this incident or this report is because it gives a rare insight into how an officer feels and what an officer goes through after they've been assaulted. Now, this officer had his nose broken by this inmate, but this is the second time this officer's nose has been broken since he's been working at this prison. And they're prosecuting the inmate and the officer made an impact statement to the prosecutor. And that's what I wanted to focus on because some of his statement is here in this article. And he says, this made me, f this made me very self-conscious of my appearance and I didn't like my children seeing me that way. He's talking about his broken nose. And by the way, he had to have surgery to repair his nose. And he also says, I didn't know how I would look afterwards and if I would have a misshapen nose as a result. Um, he added he has anxiety and depression and is having flashbacks. Um, then he um, sums everything up by saying, this whole ordeal has left me feeling unsafe at my place of work and left me seriously considering leaving this job. Now, I wanted to focus, focus on this because I know that he's not the only one who's been assaulted or has been the victim of trauma or has had a serious use of force. A lot of us have, myself included. I was almost stabbed while I was working in the jail. So I understand the feelings that he's going through. And I'm just here to say to anyone who's been assaulted, who's in this situation or a similar situation, that these feelings that you have are totally normal. You know, to feel anxiety and depression and to have flashback, that's all part of being involved in a traumatic incident. All right, so it's nothing that is unusual. And when I had my situation, when I was almost stabbed, I didn't want to come back to work. You know, I came back to work, but I didn't want to. And I had really had to consider whether I was wanted to leave this job, just like he's considering whether he wants to leave this job at this time. So this is totally normal, all right? So the way I was able to overcome my fears and my anxiety over what had happened to me was that I was able to, I, I chose to talk to people about what I was feeling and what I was going through. Um, I spoke to other officers about it and um, all the other officers talked to me about it and some officers that I spoke with had been through similar things themselves So they was able to counsel me on how to deal with what I was dealing with But I know sometimes we don't always have a support mechanism like that We don't always have someone that we can talk to and that is the issue um, We're not very good at dealing with the psychological the mental and the emotional health of each other or officers correction is really not good at that you know we need to get better at this we are more concerned about the physical um, injury to the officer which is which we're supposed to be concerned about the physical injury but we also need to be more concerned about the psychological and mental trauma that an incident causes you know a person may look fine on the outside but on the inside you know maybe everything is not not fine maybe they're having anxiety maybe they're having um depression maybe they're having flashbacks so we got to take that in cons into consideration and we got to reach out to each other and we got to talk to each other it's not good to keep everything bottled up you know if you can talk to an officer at the job if you've been a victim of an attack or you've seen something if you can talk to other officers at the job that's good if you can't talk to other people at the job maybe you can talk to someone in your family at home you know um, I didn't talk to anybody at home about what happened to me because I was concerned that my family would not understand and they would be even more fearful about me going to jail I mean going to work at the jail excuse me <laughs> going to work at the jail 
and that would just give me more anxiety but that was my situation if you have a loved one a relative a spouse that you can talk to about this talk to them about this and if you don't have anybody that you can talk to about this if you don't have a co-worker a spouse a mother a sister a brother or anybody that you can talk to about what has happened to you talk to your doctor tell your doctor what happened and maybe he can refer you to someone that can help you work through how you're feeling about what happened because it's not good to do everything alone you don't have to do everything alone it's good to talk to someone about what happened and um, that'll help you work through it now for the officers that know officers that have been assaulted when when the officer gets assaulted that's your time to reach out to that officer you know if you've been assaulted or if you've been in a similar situation if you've been traumatized at the job and you work through it when you see another officer that has experienced trauma that's the time to reach out to them you know contact them call them you know it says in this article that this officer was put on restricted duty after he you know had his nose broken which is normal you know a lot of times when an officer is involved in a use of force and is injured you won't see him at roll call. You won't see him in the locker room. You won't see him in the hallway. You won't see him in the cell block because he's been restricted. He's moved, you know, they moved him to a different area where he doesn't have inmate contact while he, you know, heals or whatever. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't reach out to the officer. You still should contact him. You can find out where he works. You can give him a call. You can show up at his post at your, on your lunch break and talk to him. Or you can see him after work. If that if you can't talk to him during the job, you can see him after work or maybe contact him at his house. Maybe the officer may not want to talk about it, but just to know that you're interested and you care means a lot. You know, because when an officer has an incident happen to him at the prison, um, sometimes you're resentful. You know, you're like, man, nobody cares. What happens to me? They'll just replace me, you know, with the next officer. If something, if I go down and I really get hurt. So we need to hear that officers do care. We need to care for each other that much where we'll reach out to you and reach out to each other and say, hey, man, how you doing? Look, you want to get together after work? You know, you want to come over to my house or I'll come over to your house? You know, we need to talk about this. Let's kick it about what happened at the jail the other day, you know. Because you do feel resentment sometimes and you do feel like you don't want to do this anymore. But I'm here to say that you can work through it and you can continue with your career. And the odds are you will not have a similar incident like the one that you're experiencing now. So and officers that um, I'm asking to reach out to officers who have been assaulted, you need to put yourself in that officer's shoes, you know. How would you feel if you were assaulted by an inmate? And see, and nowadays, everything is videotaped. You know, so within 24 hours, not only do the people that witnessed the assault know about it, your whole jail knows about it. And in, within 24 hours, your whole department may know about it because it's all on videotape. So imagine how that officer feels. You might, the officer may even feel embarrassed by the incident that happened. And all the more reason why we should reach out to our brother and sister officers and let them know that we care about them and that we're there for their support if they need us. Right. And that's the thing that I want to illustrate um, in this report. And this article speaks to that. It gives a rare insight into how an officer feels when he's assaulted. And just to say that we need to get better as a correction family on helping each other cope with trauma all right on the individual level as officers and on a departmental level we need to have more services available for officers who've been traumatized and not just focus on the physical aspect of trauma because we're good at saying okay you got stitches or you have a broken nose when you heal you're ready you're or if you may you may be traumatized by an incident but you don't have any physical injuries and everybody will treat you as if nothing happened. If you look fine, then people assume that you're ready for duty, that everything is okay. It may not be. So you need to, um, we need to have that type of um, consideration for each other. And like I said before, 
if you are an officer that has been assaulted, it's okay to seek help. It's okay to talk to your doctor or have your doctor refer you to a psychologist, a psychiatrist, or somebody that can help you work through what you're feeling about the incident. Doesn't mean you're soft. It doesn't mean that you're not cut out for this job. It just means that you're human. All right. So with that, if you have any um, questions or concerns or comments, please leave them in the comments um, section below. And as always, until next time. Peace and stay safe. This is COTV, bringing you the latest in correctional news. Subscribe now and click the notification bell to stay updated with the world of corrections. This is Correctional Officers in the News with your host, Larone Koontz.